Well, hello everybody, and it's Chaz Large here with another Fix It video. And uh, on the bench today, we've got a, a video recorder. Yes, a, a, a Toshiba uh, DVR20. This is actually a video recorder and DVD player um, and a writer. So basically, you can record from the TV, uh, from um, DVD, onto DVD or onto VHS, and you can then copy from VHS onto DVDs uh, as well, uh, which is uh, quite a useful bit of kit. It looks quite a nice unit. I've never seen one of these before. Um, but the customer is complaining uh, that it does not um, uh, load the, t uh, the tapes properly. And uh, when he brought it to me, um, uh, he said there was a tape in it but it wasn't jammed in uh, he said he tried to load it he said but it load it tried to load and then one side of it uh, went down the other side wouldn't and it has also uh, on occasion damaged um, a few tapes so uh, we can just see uh, if we look at that there the, the edge of the tape is just a little bit crinkled um, probably not quite in focus there but anyway um, so hopefully um, the rest of that tape looks okay but uh, the problem is going to be with the mechanism and typical with these sort of uh, video recorders um, um, there's uh, screws holding the, the top case on and I can feel there's uh, a good few screws uh, in the back now it's a pretty big machine so uh, I can't really show you uh, a, a full view of it anyway uh, we will get to, to work with the screwdriver and uh, we will take the screws out Generally speaking, with any kind of machine like this, you usually slide, lift it up and slide it back because it's located in a plastic slot there. And there we go. There we go. Right. So, looking at this mechanism, I can see already there is a problem. And that is that uh, you've got the carriage here and this bit is very loose whereas that bit's nice and strong so the carriage mechanism here has either gone out of alignment or broken obviously it detected me trying to move something there but uh, that is not that's not good uh, that mechanism so I'm not even going to risk trying to put a tape into it um, normally what I would do is I would have uh, a cassette uh, you can get uh, like a clear uh, cassette made of uh, plastic and I've got one somewhere just can't seem to find it uh, I thought when this was coming in I'll dig that out and that would be great and basically it's got no tapes in it but it's just got the whole housing um, so you can see the mechanism uh, work um, without having to put a tape into it but as as it is that is definitely compared to that side that is definitely not right so I think what we're going to do we're going to power it down and we're going to take the whole chassis out uh, so we can work on the chassis um, independently um, with most of these mechanisms in video recorders you can actually do that quite happily um, it just depends entirely on the interconnections um, but looking at this I can I can't see any damage but it that is definitely loose that side of the carriage is definitely loose compared to this side which is nice and strong so I suspect part of the plastic may well have broken so looking at this mechanism um, I think the safe thing is that we need to um, this part of the mechanism is not held in by this but there's a screw under there uh, which you can just see can't see it but just in there is a screw so we're going to have to take off this metal plate 
and probably the front housing that's yeah because that's that plate is on there and that's there and that's the housing so let's uh, see if we can easily remove the front scutcheon from this uh, I think we've got one screw there to start off with it's probably the only screw that's holding the front scutcheon in place just gently lever let's take that back up so you can see what I'm doing you can't because it's too big so just gently lever in the lever and then down on this side we've got another plastic clip there which we release and it could be that that's held in underneath the screw can't feel any screws The other advantage of taking um, this off is that while we're working on it, we're not going to scratch it. So uh, that makes life a lot nicer for the customer if we've not ended up scratching it. Right, there are three little clips underneath this release. Those ones on the top for pop back on so we can easily just ease those back off again. Go nearly there. And one on the side has gone back in again as well. Put together by Robox, dismantled by Matt. Right, now we've got a little bit of circuit board attached to the front, which is the infrared receiver. So, again, as is my wont. Don't pull the wires, ease the, the plate up. So that way we can keep the nice clean front nice and safe. Put that out of the way so it doesn't get damaged. So now we can see the rest of, of the mechanism. Let's put that up a little bit further. Right, so on the mechanism we should be able to remove um, ah, now that screw there. Is holding is part of the chassis, so we don't actually need that. Um, I think I am going to remove this, make life easier. the thing on. Luckily all these screws, or well, the majority of these screws are the same. It's only a couple of the long ones. There's a little bracket there that's holding that on. There we are. So we can take that out of the way. Okie dokie. Now in fact actually having removed that we may be able to just release the carriage on its own if we take that top chassis off. Let's try that, save them to remove the whole deck out, so easier than I thought. And hopefully, if, it, if there is a part that's broken, we may be able to purchase a replacement part. Now it looks like that deck mechanism will come out like so. Good old Mr. Toshiba, yeah that's I think it's there we go. So the carrier is out. Now is it broken? 
Is it just very loose? It's just very loose. That side seems to be a lot further, and all it is is held in by a little. Plastic tab there on that bar that goes across. Whereas this one is, is held in the same, but it just seems to be very loose. And there's a little plastic there which does something when it goes down. So loose that. Unbelievably loose. Hmm. But nothing seems to be broken on it. So let's pop it back into the chassis so um Let's just focus the camera again. So the two uh, levers that go in the side. Now one of the classic things that would happen with these is because it relies on like a little gear wheel to drive this mechanism down. Tension brake has come off. Obviously caught up. In there. Once it's under there. All seems right. So that will sit in that slot. this back and this will hold the whole chassis together and then we can give it a try and see if we can make it work manually without having to put the tape in. That's a threaded screw. Threaded screws, put them in, turn them backwards so it catches the thread and then screw it in. If you try screwing it straight in without getting the thread located um, then you end up with a cross threaded screw and it becomes loose or worse it breaks off or whatever. put it in there's like a little lever there which releases a grip there's a little catch you can actually see it let's just go get rid of me for a minute so when the cassette goes in it presses a lever it releases that catch so it's that catch there that's the only thing that stops the carrier from being pushed forward. There isn't one on the other side at all. It's totally just sitting there. What I would call an extremely cheap mechanism, but it's Toshiba. So, yeah. So this is where you actually need to have your hands working with you. Push it forward and it should just drop down. Do a little shuffle, 
So no, there's no cassette in there. And the reason for that is the little um, LED that's under there, infrared LED, that's shining through to two sensors. One on either side of the deck. So there's one sensor there and the other sensor there. So what we can do, we can get a piece of insulating tape. So what we'll do is we'll just put that over the sensor. And what we can do is we should be able to move that forward and see what happens. I guess that's some sort of fault mode it goes into. Hmm, right. Do we risk putting a tape in it? There's no muck or dirt anywhere. It's definitely gone off again, all by itself. interesting because when it uh, came on the head did not spin and normally when a tape is loaded the first thing that happens is the head spin. God that's stiff. You don't want the tape sticking to the head. Alright, let's see if a power off has reset it. I think that's what was happening. I think that's that looseness of that mechanism is normal. And I think the reason it was jamming up was because of the um, head not turning. I think the head bearings have just got slightly stiff. Okay, now let's stop. Let's do a review, reverse. comes to the end of the tape and stops. Huh. Cheers, have a cup of tea while you're waiting. Let's do a fast forward. One thing I don't like about some of these mechanisms and the later mechanisms when I was working on videos is they leave the head the tape around the head in fast forward and rewind but for the sake of a little bit of programming in the mechanism yeah now that's not that's not that's not skipping forward that is in part that is true fast forward so if I press stop again and then fast forward See, it doesn't unload the tape from around the head and to me that's going to cause excessive head wear all right not so much in that direction but when you go to rewind it's going to be you know a head is going that way and the tape's going that way it's going to wear the head very quickly I would have thought Right, so there must be rotational sensors um, on the underside of the spools that's determining how fast it's going. Presumably that's for the for the tape counter. Uh, and it can work out that that was going ever so fast. If we try putting the brakes on at that sort of fast forward speed, um, that could quite easily have just snapped the tape or pulled the tape off the 
the leader. But I'm now thinking whether I had to put the, the brake mechanism back on and I didn't pull that off. I think that was already off. I think that was the problem because that would explain why it would only go down one side because that mechanism was just sat there in the top jamming it. I didn't notice it. I thought it was something I'd done. I think that mechanism was off. Why that would come off by itself, don't know. Let's just let it get back to stop. Right, so if I turn it off now with the power button. Right. Saving settings, please wait, it says on the screen. It's gone off. Aha! It unwound the tape. So in standby mode, power off, it does unwind the tape, which is good. Plus point there, Toshiba. Turn it back on. Because there's a tape in, it loads it straight up. Can you see? It's an interesting little thing. If you look at this tape guide, if you look at this tape guide here, and I when I power it off, you'll see the mechanism will unload, which is fine. But you watch what happens when I turn it on and it loads. big loop of tape. That means that the back tension on the supply spool is not good enough. It should pull it out under tension, in my opinion. Hmm. So this was the mechanism here. This was actually all out. It had popped up. It was up there like that and out and that spring was off. And all that holds it in place is the fact that two parts of it sit. That bit there. That bit there sits under that piece of metal. That plastic there sits under that metal. And that bit of plastic there sits under there. And try as I might, I can't. I've inadvertently switched it back on. Never mind. Try as I might, I can't get it to come up on its own. And I can't see what part of the mechanism would make it do that on its own. So I'm just wondering, was it dropped? Was it? You know, how could that do that? Right, here we are back with this uh, Toshiba DVD recorder, and I've spoken uh, uh, at length now with the uh, the customer, and they said basically it's been used, and then it was left for a long time not used, and so consequently this uh, drum bearing had C, so I'm going to have to take that out and just give it a little tiny. Uh, coat of molly coat grease uh, just to lubricate that. As for this um, mechanism here, uh, the, the uh, back brake here which was loose, um, I'm guessing that that somehow it had a bit of a shock in transit because uh, up until yesterday the customer could put a tape in it and it, although it was chewing the tape because the, the drum wasn't spinning um, uh, it was actually loading. It was only this morning it wouldn't load because I think because they moved it. The customer moved it, perhaps put it down, stood it on its side, it fell over. We don't know. But anyway, um, that's, the, that's the reason why that's out. I can't see any reason why that would come out on its own um, other than a really bad shock. So uh, that's what I'm going to do now. I've powered it off. Um, I'm going to uh, withdraw the head drum. Um, now I'm pretty certain on this one by the look of it, the, the actual head drum motor is at the top here. So we should be able to uh, release these two screws uh, which should hold the head drum motor in place, the, um, the stator. Okay, so I'll move the camera over like that 
and if you can hear drilling in the background that's my uh, next door neighbour presumably putting up more shells seems to be doing that a lot lately so I can't uh, can't do anything about that but uh, you'll have to forgive that uh, nor uh, that noise occurring in the background well, the motor itself is there's no um, positional indicators on it so uh, it shouldn't make any difference when we take the stator out like so because it's powered down so uh, what we've got there is the actual um, top drum bearing which uh, we should be able to release with a um, allen key which will release this clamp and then the whole drum bearing should come come away the top drum usually comes away from the bottom drum um, in other video recorders separately um, I don't think undoing those screws is going to help us I think we actually need to remove the whole drum assembly so I find my trusty little box of um, iron keys which I've had my little box of Allen keys. There are 13 Allen keys in there. They belong to Ian Large. That was that's my middle name. And uh, in one company I worked for, I had to use the name Ian Large. So let's see. Um, rough guessing that it's going to be that size, and I'm, looks like I'm going to have to remove that uh, stator, uh, that that magnet. Um, now, just for simplicity's sake. Uh, what I'm going to do is mark that there so when I put it back I get it in around the right way just in case there's a, um, a magnetic field issue How's that for a screwdriver spins the whole thing around you can tell I've done this before can't you but not on this machine but uh, on similar machines so we should be able to remove the magnetic. Now we should be able to get at the clamp that's holding the top of the thing down. And look at that, I guessed the right size. I've done this before you see. Um, now the other thing we'll do, I don't think, again I don't think it's going to make any difference, but I will put a marker on there yeah, it's just a clamp it's just holding it in there be careful not to lose the little washer it's on the other side of that now we should find make sure all fingers are grease free we should find that the whole head assembly yeah comes away there it is. So in case anyone's never seen the bottom end of a video head assembly, what we've got here is um, several rotary transformers connecting to the individual heads. So we've got um, video heads and um, sound heads. Um, one for the, um, the soundtrack um, heads, uh, I'm pretty sure my memory serves me correctly is that right okay so we'll just carefully put that there and we'll fill this and yeah it's there's no there's no slide to that whatsoever so we'll just give it a bit of a clean off bit of tissue a little washer down below and then we find our tube of molly coat grease which uh, I bought ages ago liquid molly it's used on uh, bearings in motor engines so I've got more here than I will ever use in a lifetime because you don't need much so just a screwdriver just getting a little bit on there and putting it around the bottom that washer push that washer down a little bit there and just a quick rub oh, that's probably going to be too much actually but it won't make a lot of difference 
terms of operation apart from making it spin more smoothly now the head should spin put the head back on Just move it up and down a little bit that's the way it should work really nice okay and then whilst we've still got a little bit of molly on there on that bearing as well we'll just put a little touch just on there and that looks like a ball race bearing there uh, hopefully that will work its way in there that's what this stuff's designed to do is actually get into bearings on it just set it down not push it down but just set it down and get the Allen key nip that up make sure it still spins have it nice and tight there we are. We can put the magnet back on and line our little lines back together. Get our screwdriver which is magnetic. Pop it in there and hopefully as we turn the head round it's beginning to tighten it up. Nip those two up. That's all nice and firm back again. And then finally, the stator goes in there, magnets pulling it in there quite strongly. Make sure that's seated properly. in there up another spin lovely so that's done that put my little iron key box back in its safe cubby hole now the other thing that I'm going to do is again using a little bit of the molly slip grease I'm going to lubricate the um, threading arms because they run along the edge of this chassis here and here okay so I'm just gonna get a little uh, cotton bud to tighten that 
tiny little cotton bud I bought a pack of from China. But the nice thing about them is it's very fine and easy and just making sure I don't get it on anything else. And just gently go along the edge of the mechanism. Chassis rather. You don't have to go all the way up the chassis, just enough so that it will be picked up by the loading arms when it loads. Bracelet. Right, that should do there. Nothing else generally needs lubricating unless you can see any lubrication elsewhere. And sometimes around these bits of mechanism here you can see, so it's worth just Give it an extra little dab. Anything that moves generally needs a bit of lubrication. Tension arm there, but that's on its own little bearing. Most of those sort of things don't really need a lot of lubrication. There's a little bit of grease down there, so we'll add a little bit of molly coat to that. I think we're done in that respect but it's a nice clean machine it's obviously been kept in a nice clean environment most of the time okie dokie now generally speaking these little cotton buds they're pretty much a throw away once they're finished but the good thing with these is that they don't shed little um, strips of cotton they're like a little foam bud so uh, you can clean them and reuse them but you know not mix up what you're putting them on to right let's uh, plug it back in Pair it up let's load the mechanism I'm just holding my finger over the sensor LED. So it's gone into rewind because it thinks it's I've put a tape in that's full up, not full on one end. So that should now tell it it's come to an end, it should go back the other way. That should tell it it's got to the end. And release the little button there. the eject button and out she comes all looking good right now looking at the head the head is okay but there's a few little fingerprints which have got onto that so we need to clean that off now for that purpose I have some little chamois sticks and I'm had these for absolutely donkey's years. They're little bits of plastic and they come in handy when the when the chamois had it you can keep the plastic and cut the bits of plastic up for all kinds of things so always reusing it. Um, and then a little tiny bit of isopropyl alcohol just on one side and we just give the head a little bit of clean not careful um, I want to say the head drum a clean rather so that's what I'm doing there. Okay, so I'm just going to clean the head drum, but I'm not going to touch where the head is sticking out just at the moment. So I just put the chamois there just to give the drum surface. You can see 
just there, it's like a, a mark. Slightly. Just polish the drum. And go around the bottom of the drum. Just turn the head slightly so you're not touching the heads unnecessarily. You can see there's quite a bit of dirt come off that head. Drum. And then finally, to clean the head, just hold the head, the uh, chamois stick against the head, um, against the drum, and turn it so that the drum does the cleaning against the chamois. You don't move the chamois because the head is actually on a piece of uh, ceramic, and it's very easy if you were to try and clean the head to go up and down you could actually snap the head off that ceramic so you're just letting the head drum rub against the chamois to clean it, it doesn't matter which way around you do it so long as you keep the chamois still while you're doing it and that looks okay the other side and polish that a little bit there, it looks a bit mucky. Give it another clean. And then you wait. And you wait for the ice probe of alcohol to really evaporate because if you were to put a tape in now, um, that alcohol, the liquid part of the alcohol could actually cause the tape to stick to the drum and that's what rips the tape out of the drum out of the uh, cassette so that chamois uh, stick will carry on for a fair long time until such time as I need to start using the other side I've obviously touched something with the other side but I've kept it on that side um, and then um, as and when That's had it, we then get a new one out. So I think I've got a pack of chamois sticks which I've had in my stock for a good 20 odd years. <laughs> a good 20 odd years. Use them for other purposes of course as well. So let's just now take the camera back up here again and refocus. So we just try manual loading again, so we push the lever forward, drop the carriage down, cover your fingers over there, and it should go automatically into playback, like so. And whilst you've got your fingers over the uh, mechanism, it will carry on thinking it's playing a tape, even though there's no tape in there. Um, and whilst we're in there, I'll just get a little bit of cloth and give it a little spray of ISO. And we'll just run it up the capstan there, just to give the capstan a cling. And similarly with the pinch roller. dirt coming off of there. Like I say it's all in pretty good condition. Um, it's been a you know, hardly used as the customer. The copper just to, they just basically use it for copying old video tapes onto uh, DVD which is over here. Um, so that's that. So I shall then press eject. Open close. Out comes the mechanism. So uh, having had the head drum spinning, uh, any ISO probe, any alcohol on there should have evaporated. Um, we'll just also give the erase head a bit of a clean off, like so with this uh, alcohol rag. J-cloth, brilliant because they don't uh, leave any lint behind. So 
cleaning mechanism. I just clean the tape guide rollers. And the tape guide, being careful not to touch the head. Back tension lever. So this lever here is the back tension. It, the, uh, when the tape is threaded round, it comes across and puts a bit of a tension on the uh, tape just to keep it nice and taut around the drum without pressing too much. Um, any of these getting bent because of mechanisms can cause the tape to ride up and down the drum and all kinds of problems. All right, so we've got our test tape, uh, which we can put in. Happy for this tape to be mangled if necessary. Now that's interesting. It's not engaging. Let's turn it on. Aha! Mechanism hadn't gone all the way back fully. Right, I've uh, just put in the finishing uh, uh, checks and tests on this uh, Toshiba uh, DVR20 and basically the, uh, the fault as I've determined was uh, just down to the, um, uh, the head drum which was uh, seized when it came in. I've uh, left it overnight, uh, powered it back up and done test recording and so on and uh, everything seems to be fine with it now. So. Uh, uh, boxing it back up and giving it back to the customer. So thanks very much for watching this video and uh, see you on the next one.